In this video, we look at the second part of our worksheet on thermal conduction. Now, the first question in the second part says, a hot air balloon is made of 1.5 millimeter thick material of total surface area of 600 meters squared and thermal conductivity 0.06 watts per meter per Kelvin. If the material's outer surface is at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and heat energy is lost from the balloon at a rate of 3.0 times 10 to the 4 joules per second, what is the temperature of the inner surface? It then goes on to say, if this temperature is maintained by igniting a 300 kilowatt burner at regular intervals for a time of 10 seconds, what is the time between each ignition? Right? So what we'll do is we'll read the question again, and as we do, we'll jot down the important information that we're given in the question. So we're told that a hot air balloon is made of 1.5 millimeter thick material. So um, the thickness of the balloon, let's call that delta X. So delta X equal 1.5 millimeters, or of course, since we're gonna be working in SI units, we're gonna convert that to meters right away. So this is 1.5 times 10 to the minus three meters. That is the thickness of the, um, the, the balloon's material, right? Now the total surface area, let's call that A. So total surface area equals 600 meters squared. All right, so the total surface area, we'll call that A, um, is equal to 600 meters squared. And the thermal conductivity of the material from which a balloon is made, that's K. So the thermal conductivity K is equal to 0 0.06 watts per meter per Kelvin, right? Now we're told that the material's outer surface is at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and heat energy is lost from the balloon at a rate of three times 10 to the four joules per second. So we can see the temperature of the outer surface, let's call that Ts is equal to 10 degrees Celsius, right? And of course, um, we're told that heat is lost from the balloon at a rate of three times 10 to the four joules per second. So this means that our heat loss, our heat rate Q over T is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the four joules per second right and we want to find the temperature of the inner surface so we want to find the temperature of the inner surface let's call that t with a subscript i right so that is information that we're given and that is basically what we want to find so um so what we will do is of course we'll use the equation for the heat flow rate and we'll have to find our unknown temperature ti Right? So taking this into consideration, we can write our equation as Q over T is equal to K times A times delta T divided by our thickness delta X. Right? Now usually we're given um, the equation in terms of course or change in temperature delta T. But in this particular case, we're given the temperature of the, um, the outer surface of the balloon and we want to find the temperature of the inner surface of the balloon. Now it's a hot air balloon so we expect that the inner temperature is going to be greater than the outer temperature and so therefore when we talk about the change in temperature delta T we can say that delta T is going to be equal to the inner temperature Ti minus the outer temperature Ts. And so basically our equation becomes Q over T is equal to K times A bracket Ti minus Ts all over delta X, which represents the thickness of the balloon. So having done that, now we can basically substitute our values into the equation and solve for the unknown temperature Ti, right? So substituting our values, we get three times 10 to the four equals thermal conductivity 0.06 times the total surface area, which is 600. Inside the bracket, we'll have Ti minus 10, which of course is the temperature of the outer surface of the balloon. And of course, the thickness of the balloon is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus three meters, All right? So basically what we will do is to isolate our unknown and then basically solve for it, right? So before we can do that, 
let's just um, let's just work out what is here. So 0 0.06. So 0 0.06 times 600, and then of course we're going to be dividing that by. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, this calculator boy. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Right? So what we have is 3 times 10 to the 4 is equal to 24,000 times T1 minus 10. So having done that, we can then basically divide to both sides by 24,000 and then solve for um, T1. So what we get now is that T1 minus 10 is equal to 3 times 10 to the 4 divided by 24,000 would be the same thing as 2.4 times 10 to the 4. And so we get that T1 minus 10 would be equal to, that's... 2.4 into 3, that's 1.25, so 1.25. And therefore, this means that T1 is equal to 1.25 plus 10. And so therefore, this means that the, inner, not T1, but TI rather, so let me call it TI, so just to be consistent. So our inner temperature, TI, is equal to 1.25 plus 10. And therefore, TI is equal to 11.25 degrees Celsius. Right? If we're concerned about the number of significant figures, we can run it to 11.3 to three significant figures or even to 11, um, you know, to two significant figures. But if that is not critical, then you could leave it as 11.25 degrees Celsius. Right? So as expected, the inner temperature of the hot air balloon is higher or greater than the outer temperature, um, which we're given as 10 degrees Celsius. Right? Right. So that's the first part of the question there. Now the next part of the question says, if this temperature is maintained by igniting a 300 kilowatt burner. So what we're given is the power of the burner. So the power of the burner, P is equal to 300 kilowatts, which of course is the same thing as 3.0 times 10 to the five watts, right? Now, so we're told that the, if this temperature is maintained by igniting a 300 kilowatt burner at regular intervals for a time of 10 seconds. So this burner is turned on at regular intervals for a duration of 10 seconds. So the time or duration T is equal to 10 seconds. And the question asks us, um, what is the time between each ignition? Now, this is the rate at which heat energy will, of course, be supplied to the hot air balloon. But from the first part of the question, we we're also given the rate at which heat energy was being lost from the balloon. So what we will do is basically calculate the amount of heat energy um, supplied at this rate in this given time. And then, of course, we'll also use that value to determine how long it will take that amount of heat energy to escape the balloon, given that heat energy is being lost at this particular rate, right? So using our formula, of course, power, or power is equal to energy over time taken, which of course means that energy is equal to power times time. And so therefore, this will give us the heat energy supplied E. So the heat energy supplied E is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the five watts times 10 seconds and this basically gives us 3.0 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Sorry, 10 to the 6 joules. Right. So in this time, 10 seconds, when this heater rated at 3 times 10 to the 5 watts is turned on, it supplies 3.0 times 10 to the 6 joules of heat energy. Right. Now, once again, we want to find the time that is actually the time that the heater or the balloon rather is going to take to actually lose this amount of heat energy. Right? So therefore, using the same formula, power is equal to energy divided by time taken. From this, we can see that the time taken, T, is equal to the energy supplied, E, divided by the power, P. 
So in this particular case, the energy supplied is 3.0 times 10 to the 6 joules. But heat energy is being lost at a rate of 3.0 times 10 to the 4 seconds. And so this therefore gives us 3.0 times 10 to the 6 joules divided by 3.0 times 10 to the 4 joules per second. And so this gives us 100 seconds, right? Now, so if this amount of heat energy has been supplied by the heater when it was on for 10 seconds, and it will then be lost at a rate of 3.0 times 10 to the fourth um, joules per second, then it basically means that it will take a time of 100 seconds for this amount of heat energy to actually be um, lost from the balloon. Now, is this the time is this a time between um, the supplying of heat from the burner? No. Remember, the burner will be turned on for a period of 10 seconds. And while the burner is actually operating, the hot air balloon will also be losing heat. So this 100 seconds basically represents a total amount of time necessary for this amount of heat energy to actually be lost from the balloon. And this time, 100 seconds, actually includes the 10 seconds for which the burner was on and so therefore the time interval between each ignition is obtained by subtracting the 10 seconds from the 100 seconds and therefore the time interval between each ignition is equal to 100 minus 10 which gives us 90 seconds right so therefore the answer for this part of the question is 90 seconds and that is the time interval between each ignition Right? So basically, every 90 seconds, um, the, the ignition will have to be turned on in order to supply the amount of heat energy required to maintain um, the hot air balloon's temperature. Now, in this next question, it says, calculate the rate of loss of heat energy through a window unit measuring 0.7 meters by 0.4 meters when the internal and external temperatures are 20 degrees Celsius and minus 6 degrees Celsius respectively, when the unit consists of A, a single 7 millimeter thick pane of glass, or B, two 2 millimeter thick glass panes with 20 millimeters of air gap between them. And we're given the thermal conductivity of glass and we're also given the thermal conductivity of air right so in this first situation basically what we have is a window of dimensions 0.7 meters by um, 0.4 meters so I'll try, I'll try my best to draw something looking like a little window right Alright, so let this let this be let this be a window. Alright? So the dimensions of a window, as we're told, right, so the dimensions of a window are 0.7 meters by 0.4 meters. So let this be the 0.7 meter and this with the 0.4 meter right so those are dimensions of the window and we're also told that um, the window is seven millimeters thick so that would be this right here so this would be seven millimeters 
right? Now, what we're told is that the inner and the outer temperature of the window are 20 degrees Celsius and minus 6 degrees Celsius, respectively. So if you treat here as the inner, so this inner temperature here is 20 degrees Celsius. And outside here will be minus 6 degrees Celsius, right? So those are the inner and the outer temperature of the window, right? And they want us to find the rate at which heat is being lost through this window. Now, what we're given is that the window, of course, is made up of glass. And for this particular type of glass, the thermal conductivity key for the glass is given as 1.2 watts per meter per Kelvin. So 1.2 watts per meter per Kelvin, right? So they want us to find the rate of heat loss through the window when it is a basically a single seven millimeter thick pane of glass. So of course, our, we have our information. So we have the dimensions of the window, which will allow us to calculate the area. We have the thickness of the window. We have the inner and the outer temperatures. So we can find the change in temperature. And of course, we also have the thermal conductivity of glass. So according to Fourier's law, the rate of heat flow or heat loss through the window would be given by Q over T is equal to Ka delta T divided by the thickness delta X. And so therefore we can simply substitute our values into this equation and calculate the rate of heat flow or heat loss through the window. So this gives us 1.2. The area of course will be the length by the width or length by the width. So 0.4 by 0.7, right? That gives us the area. The delta T, the change in temperature, would be the inner temperature minus the outer temperature. Now we have to be careful. The outer temperature is negative, so it's gonna be 20 minus minus six. So this is 20 minus minus six. And this is all over um, the thickness of seven millimeters, which of course works out to be um, 0 0.007 meters. So point zero zero seven right and this if we try to simplify it a little bit let's see what this gives us this gives us 1.2 times 0.28 20 minus minus six these two minus signs multiplied to become a plus sign so it becomes 20 plus six and so this is 26 divided by 0 0.007 and therefore this gives us that the rate of heat loss q over t is equal to get my calculator so 1.2 so 1.2 times 0.28 times 26 equals you divide that by 0 0.007 so this gives us exactly 1248 joules per second or 1248 watts so this would represent the rate at which heat is being lost um by the the single pane of window when it or by the window when it's a single pane of thickness seven millimeters there's no insulation and so heat is being lost at this particular rate right now the second part of the question basically now wants us to consider a situation where the window is not just a single pane this time but it's actually um two two millimeters thick glass panes with a 20 millimeter air gap between them so again once again i'll try to represent that situation a simple diagram um all right so this is part b of the question so try to represent it um as best as i possibly could can so let this be window all right so we have our glass panes and in between our glass panes we have an insulating layer of um air right so an insulating air layer of air so let me just use the dots to represent the insulating area of air right so we know that each glass pane is two millimeters thick And the, the gap in between those two, which contains the air, is um, 20 millimeters, right? So 20 millimeters. So essentially what we have is two two millimeter thick panes of glass 
being separated by 20 millimeters of air. And in this particular case, we want to find the rate at which heat is now being lost through this window. Now, certain things, of course, remain the same, such as the dimensions of the window. So the area will be the same, right? So in, in this particular case, the area is still 0.7 by 0.4, and that will give us 0.28 meters squared, right? However, obviously, the thickness of the window will change. And of course, we'll plug that into the, our formula to calculate Q over T later on. So um, another set of information which hasn't changed would be the inner and outer temperature of the window. So let's say this is the inner temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, and the outer temperature is minus 6 degrees Celsius. Um, we do not know the temperature at these interfaces, but do we need to know them? Do we need to find them out? No. We weren't specifically asked to find these temperatures and therefore we don't need to. However, if we were asked to find the temperatures, then we definitely could. It would be a tedious calculation, but since we weren't asked to find the temperatures, we will not do that, right? So what we're going to do, however, is to find the thermal resistance for each layer of material, find the total thermal resistance by treating them as resistors connected in series. And then from that, we'll be able to find the thermal conductivity, well, not the thermal conductivity, but the rate at which heat is actually flowing um, or being lost through this window, right? So let's consider the for the for the for the glass window. Or oh, for the glass. The thermal resistance RT is given by, if I remember the formula for that, RT is equal to the thermal conductivity divided by no RT is equal to the thickness delta x divided by the thermal conductivity k times the area a right so this gives us so for the the first layer two millimeters or 0 0.002 meters divided by the thermal conductivity of glass which is 1.2 times the area, which of course is 0.28. And this will give us, point zero zero six. let's call it point zero zero six. And the units of course will be Kelvin per watt. So this will be the thermal resistance of the layer of glass or the piece of glass of thickness two millimeters. And of course, the two panes of glass are of identical dimensions and therefore they will have the same thermal resistance. Now we can do the same now for the layer of air, right? So for the layer of air, its thermal resistance is given by the same formula the thickness divided by the thermal conductivity times area. And so this gives us thickness, of course, which is 20 millimeters or 0 0.02 meters divided by thermal conductivity of air. We're given the thermal conductivity of air as 0 0.026. So this is 0 0.026. And the area, of course, will be the same the area would, of course, be 0.28, right? And so this gives us 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.026 times 0.28. And that gives, this gives us 2.75. So this gives us 2.75, and that is Kelvin per watt. And as expected, the thermal resistance of the air is greater than the thermal resistance of the pane of glass, right? So having found the thermal resistance of the pane of glass and the thermal resistance of air, again, we can treat the entire composite window as three thermal conductors in series, and therefore the total resistance will be the sum of the individual thermal resistances. And of course, since the panes of glass are identical, we will simply multiply its thermal resistance by two, and we add that to the value of the thermal resistance of the air. And so the total thermal resistance, so total RT 
is equal to 2 times 0 0.006 plus 2.75. And so this gives us 0 0.012 plus 2.75. And so this gives us uh, 2.86. Point zero point point zero one mm. no point point no much <laughs> off um, so two point seven five plus point zero one two right two point seven six two so two point seven six two and this will be Kelvin per watt. So the total thermal resistance is 2.762 Kelvin per watt. But we're not finished. What we want to find now is the rate of heat loss through the material. And therefore, we're going to be using the formula Q over T is equal to delta T divided by RT. Now, delta T, of course, is the change in difference in temperature between the inner and the outer surface, which we already calculated to be 26 Kelvin or 26 degrees Celsius, right? And so this will give us now 26 divided by 2.762. And so this gives us a value of 9.41 watts. So as expected, we see that there is significant reduction in the rate at which heat is lost through the window when there is an insulating layer of air between the two glass panes as opposed to when it was a single pane of glass or even though the thickness was a little bit different, right? And generally, as I said, this is the effect of insulating materials. They usually produce a significant reduction in the rate at which heat is lost through the particular material. Now, on to the next question. This one says, a diver's wetsuit has a total surface area of 0 0.40 meters squared. It consists of an outer rubber layer of thickness 10 millimeters with an inner wooden lining, which can be assumed to trap a 3.6 millimeter thick layer of still air next to the diver's skin. If the diver's skin's temperature is 34 degrees Celsius and he's diving in water at a temperature of 14 degrees Celsius, Calculate the total thermal resistance of the wetsuit, that's A, and B, estimate the rate at which diver loses heat energy. So once again, we'll draw, use a little diagram to kind of represent the situation. We won't be able to represent the situation fully, but of course, at least the important bits of um, the, the situation, right? So this diver is wearing a, a wetsuit. Now the wetsuit basically comprises two layers. It comprises an outer rubber layer of thickness 10 millimeters, with an inner woolen lining, which can be assumed to chop a 3.6 millimeter thick layer of still air next to the diver's skin, right? So let's represent our situation in a little diagram. And of course, the diagram will be exer exaggerated for clarity, right? Right, so having, having drawn a diagram, so this is basically now our, our situation. So this is representing 
the, the outer rubber layer of thickness 10 millimeters. So this represents the outer rubber layer of thickness 10 millimeters, and this represents the inner layer of um, wool, which traps the layer of air 3.6 millimeters six thick, right? So this is the, the wool, and this is the rubber, right? Now, the wool will be next to the diver's skin, and the rubber will, of course, be exposed to the, the, the water in which the diver is diving, right? So having done that, we can now go ahead, right? So, so the, 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 the diver's skin, we're told, is at a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the diver's skin, this will be 34 degrees Celsius. And the temperature of the water is 14 degrees Celsius, right? And we're also given that the total surface area of the diver's wetsuit, so the total surface area of the diver's wetsuit is equal to 0.4 meters squared, right? So the total surface area um, A of the diver's wetsuit is equal to 0.4 meters squared. So, we're also given that the thermal conductivity of air, so the thermal conductivity of air, so K subscript air, is equal to 0 0.024 watts per meter per Kelvin, and the thermal conductivity of a rubber is equal to 0 0.05 watts per meter per kelvin right and of course what we're asked to find is the is the total thermal resistance of the wetsuit so basically this is a simplified representation of two layers of the wetsuit this layer represents a layer of rubber this represents a layer of wool now these are materials with different um thermal conductivities and of course we will calculate the respective thermal resistance of that particular um, size of the material and essentially we will treat them as thermal conductors in series and so therefore we'll add their thermal resistances to give the um, the total thermal resistance of the wetsuit right so for 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 the layer of air its thermal resistance rt is equal to thickness delta x divided by thermal conductivity k times the total surface area a right and so this will give us 3.6 millimeters of course you'll convert that to meters so 3.6 millimeters 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or in, in decimal this would be 0 0.0036 divided by thermal conductivity of air which is 0 0.024 times the total surface area which is 0.4 right and this will give us a value of so 0 0.0036 divided by 0 0.024 times 0.4 in brackets and this gives us 0.625 and the unit will be Kelvin per watt so the thermal resistance of the layer of air is 0.625 kelvins per watt. We now do the same for the layer of rubber, right? So for the rubber, its thermal, con thermal resistance rather given by the same formula, delta X divided by K, A. And so this gives us the thickness of rubber, 10 millimeters, which of course must be converted to SI units. So that would be 10 divided by 1,000. That would be point, um, point zero 0.01 divided by its thermal conductivity, um, which is 0 0.05 times the total surface area, which of course is 0.4. And so this gives us 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.05 times 0.4 in brackets. And so this gives us 0.5 Kelvin per watt. 
And so therefore, what this means is that the total thermal resistance is equal to the sum of the two, 0.625 plus 0.5. Hmm, what went wrong there? Why might these, why, why these matters look so off? Let me check my calculations again. All right, so I made a, all right, um, let me check this part. So, right, right, right. 0 0.0036 divided by brackets, 0 0.024 times 0.4 brackets. Right, so this should be 0.375. I don't know how I came up with 0 0.625. 0 0.375. Right, and so the total thermal resistance, no, is the sum of the two because essentially the acting as thermal conduct is connected in series. So this is equal to 0.375 plus 0.5 so this gives us 0.875 Kelvin per watt. So this will be the, th the total thermal resistance of the wetsuit, right? Now, having, having done that now, they want us to basically estimate the rate at which the diver um, is losing heat. And so to do that, we simply use the formula that Q over T is equal to delta T over RT. So Q over t is equal to delta t over rt where of course rt represents the total thermal resistance not just the thermal resistance of one material but the total thermal resistance and so therefore this means that the diver is losing heat energy at a rate given by 34 minus 14 that is 20 divided by 0.875 and this gives us Twenty-two point nine joules per second. So twenty-two point nine joules per second, or twenty-two point nine watts. And of course, I mean, if you want to round it to two significant figures, I mean, approximately twenty-three watts. So the wetsuit or the diver is essentially losing heat energy at a rate of twenty-three watts.